Hello, my name is Brett Dursky. We'll be going over graphs and charts and how they're related to, and most likely how you'll see them within the TEAS test. This is brought to you by the Academic Resource Center, and let's get started. So just a general thing about graphs. Graphs are an effective way of displaying your data in an easy to read way. With that being said, you need to know how to read graphs and decide on the proper type so that you effectively display your data so for anybody who may need to look at it or along the way need to actually interpret it themselves, there's no ambiguity as to what you were trying to put. So now with that in mind, let's start going through the various types of graphs and what they're best used for. So one of the most common graphs you've probably seen a lot are bar graphs. They're helpful for quickly showing comparisons between different categories. So this is one of the easier ways to show categorical data. Here in this example to the right, you see that there's four different types of nuts that um, different students have voted for. As you can, you can kind of quickly see that walnuts are probably the most uh, least favorable, whereas just plain peanuts are the most. So here we can quickly kind of deduce most popular, least popular, average with low calculations, so overall, it's a very quick way of effectively looking at overall trends of number of students with this particular data, but that can be applied to any other type. This is just a quick example. Next with the list, we have scatter plots. These are more related to not really categorical data, just more data points you plotted, say you ran a test on a patient or something like that. Here we're shown the example of weight versus height. So as your height increases, you can kind of see a general trend where the weight increases, which is something we would expect. But that kind of gives you another thing that correlation isn't causation. This is one of the big, big key points if you've ever taken the statistics course or any course with um, data comparisons. This means that just because of the general trend doesn't mean that one is causing the other. That is something that's left to further testing and that kind of thing to actually prove something is causing the other. What a scatter plot generally does is show you a relationship between two variables, where the x-axis, the one on the horizontal, the one that's flat, and then you have the y, the y-axis, the vertical axis. In this case, the y-axis is your weight and the x-axis is your height. So pie charts are kind of in that similar trend to bar graphs. In this case, the pie chart is used similar with categorical data, so that's the same. But here it's more relative to the amount you have. So the best example is kind of a percentage, which is the most com one of the most common things for a bar chart. I mean, a pie chart to show you. Here it shows you relative recommended diet percentages. Here you have fruit at a high 30% where dairy, vegetables are in a little smaller percentage change. So you kind of see relative to your entire diet how that's supposed to be broken up into. But that can, again, that can be exemplified in any other, any other type of data you have. There's just a general trend of it. And so with all that kind of shown to you, that's the main portion of the graph you'll see. The biggest questions you'll definitely have to keep in mind is they may give you some information with a chart and ask you to give them additional information, like how much is protein and fruit comprised of an, a total, a total um, of your total diet. So you may have to do a little bit of addition, a little bit of multiplication, those various type of things. But overall, it's quick interpretations of graphs that you most often see as a question. So that is all I have for you with the graphs and charts. And future videos will be going over general science and chemistry.